good morning. It's time to talk antiques once again, and we look like we're ripping and roaring ready to go in here. Hey, your buddy called me the other day. Which one? Max. He's still alive. You know, he I believe <laughs> I did talk to him a, a minute or two. He said his wife, oh, Donna had him out working. Yeah. Well, when he called me, they was on the way to Murfreesboro. He had two doctor appointments, and she had one. That don't sound good at all. No, it sounds like she's way ahead of him, though. <laughs> <laughs> Two well, to one. she's a lot better looking, too. Yeah, and you know? a whole lot better shape, evidently. She only had one well. appointment. <laughs> okay, so... Then was proof of life he was calling for. Yeah. Was proof of life. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Dukes of Hazard was at um, the car show in Tullahoma. On Saturday. That we yeah. talked about, yeah. And they say it was packed. Yeah, they said it was packed. thousands of people there. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was Ronnie impressive. said there was like 2,000 people standing in line. He's one of them to get something done. So, Ronnie, you tell us your experience as a as a person standing in line to get something signed. Then we're going to get Philip's experience as the interviewer, the camera person. My experience was it was very, very hot yeah. standing in line. I believe And you. I had to go through it twice to get everything ready. Uh, I sat in my easy chair and thought about how wonderful it is that me being air conditioned while you was out there. Uh, I know you did. I appreciate it. But that. Ronnie, you, now you actually got, you have a little Dukes of Hazard car, uh, like a 118 scale or something that you got signed? Yeah, I got I got that signed and, and we got your pedal car yeah, signed. Yeah, I, I have a Dukes of Hazard pedal car. The Ronnie said the only pedal car down there. Yeah, it was the only way. People were flocking over us to take pictures of it. Yeah. And they'd make us move out of lines so they get a clear picture. Uh, so huh. did, did you have to so you couldn't get both of them signed at the same no, time? No, they were in lines, different right? lines. Yeah, they were in different oh, lines. Okay. And and of course, you know, we were standing in in the long line, which was uh Bo. Like we didn't know at the time was John Schneider's line. And the guy comes down and he says, Well Catherine Box line and Tom Wompat's line are fairly short. So of course we jump out and go over there. Then we've got to get back in line. Yeah. If I'd known that I would have stayed in that. Didn't you say there was a couple thousand people down there standing in line to get their signature? There was a bunch of people. I don't know how many. Yeah. But there he was. It was a long line. Was John Snyder still playing music? Yeah. He, uh, he's, he he's got a new album that just, just came out. Oh, really? We, yeah. we talked about it during the during the press conference I, interview. I didn't know. I hadn't heard. Okay. So here's the deal on him. John Snyder is 57. Somebody asked me. Daisy, Catherine. He is 63. Well, do them shorts still look as good as they did back then? Now, you'll have to ask Ronnie. Well, she wasn't wearing them. Oh, she yeah. wasn't wearing she them. Was. And then Luke is 66. 66. Yep. So, so Ronnie, you said um, that uh, more people wanted the picture took with the pedal car than the big car, huh? They really, really did. Now, you, you, tell us about the, the really good part where you sitting up there panting like you was... Thirsty. Oh, I was talking like I'm talking now, you know, because I was losing my voice. Yeah, you, he has allergy and, problems. And uh, and uh, Catherine Mock, she says, and I and I was about out of water because it's just a little bit left in my bottle. She said, uh, here, take this water. So she hands me the water she's drinking. Yeah, and I said, how, how'd you like that, Ronnie? He said, well, it tastes like it lipstick. Tastes like lipstick. <laughs> I told, I told. Um, so I gave David the bottle. I mean, yeah. He still got that bottle. Yeah. Well, he gave it to me oh, to go it. with my pedal car. Oh, my but. Nice. You know what I told him, Ray? Nice. I said, you might ought to hung on that bottle because that's as close as your lips is ever going to get to her her lips. Yeah. I didn't think nobody would believe the story anyway. Well, that's probably true. <laughs> well, I know that you you would tell the story to be true because you're a mason. You ain't going well, no, to lie to another here, mason especially. Years from now, I'm standing there with a water bottle. Yeah. There's food lying on it. He's going to believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so have you got that. anything else you want to add to your adventure? Uh, that just about covers it. Uh, we did get a good picture of uh, John Snyder with your pedal car. Yeah, you, the way you took he took the picture was he's holding up my pedal car and he's looking through it like where you, you know, the seat part. He really liked the car. He, he, we went through Catherine Box line first and I saw him do a double take and pointed it to his wife. I seen it was his wife mm -hmm. sitting behind him yeah. there. And uh, and then when I got to his line, he says, man, I've been waiting on that for two hours. Mm -hmm. huh. But he, what he did on his signature, he wrote, 
this is awesome. And then he signed his name and then put the bow. Mm -hmm. They signed, the two boys signed on the hood. And Catherine, I say the good spot. You know, like, you know, they say a sweet spot for the uh, baseballs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She signed the windshield. Oh, uh, okay. Cool. All right. So, Ronnie, do you have anything else about your adventure? I think that's about it. Okay. So, Philip. Yeah. Let's go to the... Uh, interviewer side of it since you you do work for a television studio so friday night there was a secret press conference that you had to be on a list for and everything it was kind of odd <laughs> yeah jimmy uh jim fuller got it got us on the list so me and him were over there for channel six uh for the press conference with uh, with tom and john and uh there was a couple of uh radio station from uh winchester a couple of couple of uh, newspapers from around and uh, Tom and John what Snyder about your competitor in. the Channel 6 were they there was Chelsea there <laughs> Chelsea was there Chelsea okay. had some good questions mm. even though she wasn't born until after the show was mm. off the air but she still asked some good questions <laughs> yeah. it's really not so, off the air though well and when it was new yeah, yeah so that's what I was now I was like I was born in 1970 so I was I was perfect age for mm. uh for Deuce of Hazard. Okay, so let's hear some of those good questions y'all asked. One was really interesting. You said, what did you say about making of the show, the expense? They said that it was one of the most expensive shows on the air at the time. It was, I forget the exact number, but it was like 1.2 or 1.3 million dollars an episode. And that uh, that they had, they had a huge, um, a huge ratings, like, I don't know, like, 40%, 70% of of shows at one or of TVs at one point were tuned to them on Friday night. Mm. They said that that in Texas they moved Friday night football to Saturday in some areas mm. so people could stay home and watch the Duke boys. Mm. <laughs> so, but they said that they that uh, that they were one of the shows that pioneered the fast cut, fast moving shows that we're used to today, mm -hmm. where where there's a whole lot of shots and before then, this you think this is the late seventies, early eighties. Um, on all the, uh, uh, I guess it'd be like the uh, lawyer shows and cop shows at the time. There would be longer shots of people standing there talking about stuff. And in the Duke Boys, was when they first started cutting back and forth to each person during a conversation. Mm -hmm. So all that thing, all that drove up costs and stuff. And uh, they, they had over a hundred people. Um, on the crew working mm -hmm. at the time. So uh, now a question I asked you was, you said that they only destroyed two of the cars. Yeah, they said that. Uh, they, well, they asked about the cost of you know cars, and everybody asked about that. And he said that they had only tear up two cars per episode, and that was only about ten thousand dollars out of a one point two, one point three million dollars. Do you know how many episodes? How many episodes? Yeah, uh, there was a lot. There was twenty six episodes for uh, what six years, five mm -hmm. six years. So. Yeah, so they tore up a lot of cars. They yeah. did tear up a lot of cars. That's it. There's a lot of hoods and doors to to scavenge to have them sign, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, so they ended up doing like a 42 minute long press conference that, or close to that, and uh, on our Fourth of July episode of the of the Living Show, uh, we figured it'd be really hard to get people to come in on Fourth of July to shoot. So we're gonna run that whole thing as part of that episode and a whole bunch of musical segments hmm. and stuff. So if anybody's interested in seeing that, that whole interview, it'll start airing on the 4th of July. Okay, so so the best I can figure, Enos is still alive. I think the so. The deputy. Right, yeah. And then the two boys and the girl, and then uh, Cooter's still alive, right? And I don't think so. He's not? Now, he was a senator at one time. He was? Yeah. Senator one, the, the one that uh, drove the wrecker and yeah, yeah, he he was a senator. Well, you really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't either. I never thought it. Or as they say, who'd have thunk it? All right, so he, <laughs> yeah, who'd have thunk it? So Philip, googling all this. So what? Well, let's see what you have found and let's see. Okay, so let's okay, hear. we have Denver Pyle died. Um, I was, doesn't tell you who's who. We'll go right down the whole list. Starting okay. with Tom Wopat yeah. is 65. Oh, okay. Uh, John Snyder, 57. Catherine Box, 63. Mm -hmm. uh, Denver Pyle died. He was born in 1920 and died in 1997. 
Ben Jones is alive. He's 75 years old. Now, what was Ben Jones? Let me see. Open up my links here. Uh, he was Cooter. Okay, you're right. So Ben Jones is still alive. Okay. Uh, Sorrell Brooks is died in 1994, and, and he played Boss Hog. Okay. Uh, James Best. Now he was. Yeah, he was uh, the sheriff. The sheriff. Yeah, he. You know, died. He, he did a lot of westerns, like in the forties, fifties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He did a lot of westerns. Well, and that was the one that was uh, the old fellow, what, Dennis Powell. Was that his name? Uh, Denver. Denver. Denver Powell. Denver Powell. He, he he played uh, back in the Andy Griffiths on oh, the yeah. Darlings. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. he yeah. played in a lot of. He was. He a good, was a good actor. Yeah, he was. Yeah, and Enos is still alive. He's eighty-one years old. Okay, so, so how old is uh, Ben Jones? Does it say seventy-five? Ben Jones is seventy-five. There huh. you go. So I, actually, I thought that the 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 Tom, John, and Catherine were the only three that were still alive. So I was way off on so that. So there's another bow there, right? The mm -hmm. very bottom, Sonny, somebody. He must have played. He was. Uh, <coughs> oh, I just I just said. What? I just said. I can't remember. Uh, that was Enos. Oh. Yeah. Deputy. Oh. Okay. So the guy that played sheriff was a real deal, wasn't he? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. So um so Boss Hogg kinda makes a bad reflection on small town politics. Well, just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, boss, uh he was a busy man though, you know what? Always had something. Wasn't it called the boar pit? His little bar? Uh, mm -hmm. Was it the boar pit? The boar's nest. Remember, boar's remember nest. his wife, Lulu? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> She's not listed on our list of people here. She must not have been one of the, <laughs> the main actors in It's not. So. so, did he say when he was, when they were shooting it, how, how long they would work a day? He did not say how long how long it was. So you said there were several good questions asked. Now, not just Jim's good questions. You said our little girl at the other station yeah. asked some good questions. Well, so. There was stuff about about their what they've been doing, obviously. Since, like what? Uh, well, they've been uh, stage acting. Um, oh, what's the younger one's name? Well, Bo. Um, Bo. Okay. He he owns a studio down in uh, Louisiana. And uh, he's he's done a lot with flood relief down there recently, mm -hmm. and uh, and he's been shooting movies too that are that um, shot in Louisiana, shot in Louisiana with people he knows and stuff, and mm -hmm. and his current wife is uh, is like a TV producer or something like that mm -hmm. kind of thing, and uh, and he's also just put out a new record that's called um, uh, Ruffled Skirts, and it was. Uh, he said that that was a his wife came up with the with the name and said they had pulled up to a double wide that had been hit by a flood and the skirting around the bottom of it like every other panel was missing and they're like look the flood ruffled her skirts and he was like oh that's a great title <laughs> and so, so so much for inspiration oh, yeah. right? and he said they've also had a bunch to do with the uh, FEMA and FEMA trailers and that'll ruffle your skirt too yeah. <laughs> all right I tell you what let's take a break. Hello, I'm Pickin' Rick T from CFC, best place to get your used auto parts and all types of metals to repurpose for your needs. Just take a drive down 55, see this handsome guy, stop on by. Check out our computer for hundreds of autos to locate the make and the model of the part you need. $2 fee is all you pay. Sign in and get a hand stamp, it's good for all day. Bring in your tools, get the parts you need pulled, and use a wheelbarrow to lighten the load. Pay for your parts, prices you'll be fond of. Each part's price the same, Chevy or Honda. Get exchange warranty for 30 days too. Swap out the parts you don't need for the parts that you do. Happy picking. Madeline's Antiques and Uniques at 6107 Murfreesboro Road in Manchester has been helping collectors find just the right thing since 2008. With 40 quality dealers and a constantly changing inventory of collectibles from the 1800s to the present, they have many unique items in the store and new things coming in daily. Are you looking for the perfect lamp or clock to finish your collection? A vintage lunchbox from your childhood? Well, you can find that plus any number of other unique items in their huge building. With their easy access off I-24, they meet many travelers from around the world and just around the corner that come to buy and sell antiques or just to stop and have a free cup of coffee and a cookie while browsing around the store. 
Come visit owner Madeline Kemp and travel back in time at Madeline's Antiques and Uniques. So many memories. My name's John Hirschman. I'm one of the original six owners of PH Rentals. Started the company 30 years ago when we saw a need for individual construction, industrial, and commercial storage. We have trailers and containers for lease and sell. Our physical location is 2947 Old Manchester Highway, Tullahoma, Tennessee. Uh, my phone number is area code 931. 273-4252. The Jiffy Burger on the Hillsboro Boulevard in Manchester has been voted as having the best hamburgers in Manchester. Hometown atmosphere, historical memorabilia, and of course those great burgers, salads, chicken, and so much more. It's the Jiffy Burger on the Hillsboro Boulevard in Manchester. Call in orders at 728-4452. You can also order at the convenient outdoor curb service. Hamburgers are made the old-fashioned way. At the Jiffy Burger, Manchester's finest hamburgers. Open 7 30 until 9, Monday through Saturday. We would like to thank Dr. David Florence for supporting Let's Talk Antiques. See Dr. Florence at 804 Kalon Street in Manchester for all of your medical needs. Call 728-5522 for your appointment today. Most insurances accepted. Hey everybody, we're back with Talking Antiques and the number here is 728-1320. All right, David, we might ought to go over and see if he needs this to wipe the sweat off his brow this morning. He might still be. You, you know, not that I want him to pass away, but you know that when he does pass away that he's willed me his guitar. You do know that, right? I'll take his truck. <laughs> yeah, you want his truck? Yeah, I'll take his truck. Well, I've got him on air saying, yeah, the guitar goes to me, so you got that. You got he that segment. promised it to what? me, too, though. Oh, he did? Yeah. yeah. What kind of guitar is this now? It's that, that one built in... Um, uh, War Trace. What is it? Oh, Gallagher. 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 Yeah, Those okay. are great guitars. Those are really I wouldn't mind having I'll, that myself, I'll let you Max. know once I get it. Hey, Max, yeah. I wouldn't mind having that myself. Well, we might have a custody battle over this guitar. <laughs> Look like it. All right, so um, are we ready to get started? You was going to say, was you going to say something? No, nah, I think I'm okay. Are you done? I think I'm done, yeah. Okay. I'm just going to sit back for the whole rest of the show, okay? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Well, why don't you get started on this month in collecting history there, Ronnie? And um, um, so the very first one. Okay, the very first one is June the 1st, 1938. Superman arrived on Earth in Action Comics number one. And Philip has a, a copy of a reproduction print. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, e it's, even it's though it is, a, copy. even though it's a reprint, it's worth four to two thousand, depending on if it's got a signature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought? Who'd ever think? Okay, so oil. so that's the very first thing. Let's just look up some mm -hmm. Superman yeah. comics since. Um, I think you need to hang out now, outside. Now that comic, Ronnie, brought three point two million dollars it auctioned off, right? Yeah, Christie's in nineteen ninety nine. Um, no, wait a minute. Yeah, that. Uh, I was looking at something else. In 2014, an A9 graded copy come off eBay for $3.2 million. Off of eBay? Mm -hmm. You think eBay didn't get some commission there? I, I that bid on that one. That was a really good final value. Yeah. Where did you stop at, like 2.3? I, I think I bid $1,000 on that one. 1000 <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somehow it just kind of flew past me. I don't it know. did? I thought it would stop yeah. about there. Well, since you bid on it, what was the starting bid? I think it was it was somewhere around there. I don't I don't remember. It's been you just want been you want to be one ago. of the ones that bid just, on it, right? Yeah, I just want to be one that bid on it, and I knew once it you know it got up to where it was gonna go to that I didn't really have any business bidding on it because I might win. Well, yeah. you, you'd have got it for a thousand dollars. Well, if, if it brought three point two million, you could have been the big dog and bid a couple million on it. I could. I might have had to borrow some money real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Can you can you convince a local banker that that a comic book's worth a couple of million dollars? Well, it's a Grady comic book too, though. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so you've looked up some Superman comics, right? I have. Uh, well, I looked up Action Comic Number One just to see what uh, what it's bringing currently on eBay, and here was one for eight thousand one hundred. Uh, this is a uh, it's an original. It says that's a comic mm. strip, though, isn't it? I don't think so. It's Action Comic Number One, nineteen thirty eight. If it's original, uh, why is it so cheap? Um, hmm? Let me get to the listing. Sorry. 
Well, you're going to have to hurry up. You know, you know uh, you've I'm heard slowing. that old saying, dead air. We can't my, have it. My family's had a pawn shop for over 40 years. My father told me that years ago he had pawned some comic books with Action Comics number one that had been through a fire. I just thought he really didn't know what he was talking about. And again, I was the one who was wrong. That's what happened a lot of my life. I was going through boxes mm. of collectibles and comics after he died. There's no cover on it, and it has burn marks on it. Oh, okay, so there you go. Uh, there are six pages front and back complete. Okay, so it's only six six pages of that issue, and it had been burned in a fire, and it brought eight thousand one hundred dollars. Okay, so buddy. that's that. so, well, man, okay. was it? that's not too bad then. Uh, so let me just let me hit Superman here. If I owned something like that, I couldn't find a buyer. Uh, no, Superman comic. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, you, I believe you could on that, though, Ray. I don't think you had no problem. <laughs> right. That's just hard to believe. All right, well, that was, that was the... Okay, so what's the second one? The second one is a, uh, a lot of comic books uh, that had Daredevil, Superman, Fantastic Four, and Star Wars, and Conan. Hmm. Uh, 19 bids for the those... Five comics for uh, six thousand four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. um, here's a Superman number two, uh, graded a three point oh. Um, this is pages, which makes me think that it's not not the full comic book. Uh, they were asking fifty five hundred and took a best offer, but it was over four thousand. <laughs> here's a Superman number fourteen. Graded an 8.5 from 1942. Uh, that went for $4,200. Here's a set of Action Comics Superman number 44. Um, well, it's not quite straight through 44 through 60, and then added to eight, issue 85. That went for $4,000. Hey, here's one. I don't know if you overlooked this one or did you see this one. It's the Action Comic. It's the number one, the 1938, but it's been restored and it's a nine point. They're right. asking 615,000 for it. Wow. Oh, I'm, I'm going on sold things, so that's the current listing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're asking 615,000 for that. I wonder how you restore a comic book and- Very and, gently. I don't know. It seems like you'd mess it up if you're, if you're messing with an original. Yeah, I don't know. Here's a uh, Superman number two. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> uh, went for, Four thousand dollars for a buy it now. Uh, here is a 1940 Superman of America membership ring. Uh, went for three thousand six hundred dollars. I bet you got that in a box of cereal. Hmm. <laughs> Brought a lot of money, didn't it? Yeah, thirty-six hundred. Not bad. Hmm. Uh, we've got Superman number five. Um, they were asking. Thirty-seven hundred dollars and took probably about thirty-four hundred. Looks like uh, Superman number two graded a one point eight from nineteen thirty-nine. They were asking thirty-five hundred dollars and got around three thousand. Uh, Superman number fourteen um, went for two thousand eight hundred eleven dollars and seventy-five cents as a buy it now. Mm. <laughs> Um, Superman number four, um, they were asking 3000 got pretty close to that, but took a best offer. Superman number two, graded a 4.0, uh, $2,750. So once you get past the first one. Yeah, the other one's, well, I mean, you know, twenty, twenty $3,000 comic book, still nothing to sneeze at. Mm -hmm. But, uh, okay, so. what you need to do is, uh, Find out where Jerry Siegel lives. Get him uh, signed mine. And stand outside his his uh, house until he until he signs your your reproduction. Well, you think he might be at one of those comic cons or whatever they call them things? I don't know, man. You know, got to think how old this guy is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he's 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 got to be really old. Yeah. Fifteen twenty. We're like in his nineties. Yeah. So I I don't know if he hangs out at comic cons or not. You don't think so? Yeah. Never know. Hey, he, we'll maybe have your agent. But he could hang out at senior citizens. 
<laughs> he could. Mm -hmm. There you go. The local so, senior citizen, wherever he lives at. Fine. Okay, Ronnie, so good. we got that's the first day of the month. So what's the Okay. What's the next date? June the 1st, 1926, is the birthday of Norma Jean Mortensen, who is Marilyn Monroe. And now her fawn colored overcoat sold for 175000 at Julian's Live in 2014. And her personal makeup case sold at Christie's in 1999 for $266,500. Wow. Okay. Now, also, the dress she wore from the Seven Year Itch option for $5.6 million. Mm. And profiles in history. Ain't that the one that Debbie Reynolds had? That was exactly the one she had. Huh? Yeah. And um, her grave marker from Westwood Village Memorial Park Cemetery in Los Angeles sold for two hundred twelve thousand five hundred. Now I don't know they what they did. They sold about her grave marker. marker? <laughs> so, so somebody snatched that up. It sounds like. No, no, that's. Or they might have replaced it. Or was that just a marker to show where they was going to dig it? Uh, it looks like a. It looks like a little plaque that would mm -hmm. go it's somewhere. Like the one that they must have. She was interred it. in a uh, vault. Yeah. Okay, so so so. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to steal uh, markers. I hope them. not. <laughs> they they might have replaced it or something. That was okay. Old. So Philip, what does our buddy eBay say about mm. Marilyn Monroe? Our buddy eBay says that somebody had a whole bunch of Andy Warhol uh, paintings of her. I believe this is the the full set of four. There were ten paintings. Nine hundred thousand dollars with nine bids on From that. A live auction event. Yeah, and then somebody had um, uh, had another single painting that went for of another Andy Warhol of of Marilyn that went for one thousand five hundred dollars with four bids. Uh, another one went for one hundred and thirty thousand dollars with four bids, and another one went for sixty five thousand dollars with three bids. And one went for thirty thousand dollars with sixteen bits, and those are all the paintings where the colors are, you know, like a, a negative image type kind, yeah. of, kind of odd paintings that, that Warhol did. So, so that's where the real money is. What about that signature of Playboy there? Uh, Playboy on down. Down. Here is a high grade original 1953 Playboy number one signed by Hugh Hefner. And Marilyn Monroe, uh, fourteen thousand eight hundred dollars with eighty-two bids. Mm. Man, uh, here's another copy of that, that with sixteen bids for twelve thousand one hundred dollars. Uh, here's some some photos of her from a, a photographer. A lot of is it a lot of two hundred seventy-six or just lot number two hundred seventy-six? Just lot number. Yeah, uh, twelve thousand dollars for that. Here is a Marilyn Monroe authentic owned and worn ivory satin coat dress uh, from the estate of Lee Strasberg. Uh, it went for, well, they were asking 10500 and they got somewhere close to 10000 for Lee it. Lee Okay, so coach. we got about a minute before we have to take another break. Give us a couple more items. Well, there's one. Here's a, a portrait. A rare Joe DiMaggio signed Marilyn Monroe photo, PSA DNA graded. Hmm. Uh, they were asking $10,000 and took a best offer. Um, here's some more uh, of her Andy Warhol What's paintings. What's that right there? Marilyn Monroe and many other collection of autographs. It's just a sheet of paper that, mm -hmm. that has a lot of famous people's autographs. Uh, seven bids, $3,600. All right. I tell you what, you got to push the button. So we, oh, yeah. to push the button, we better take a break, and then we'll come back and you can tell them about that check. Okay. Hello, I'm Pick and Rick T from CFC, best place to get your used auto parts and all types of metals to repurpose for your needs. Just take a drive down 55, see this handsome guy, stop on by. Check out our computer for hundreds of autos to locate the make and the model of the part you need. Two dollar fee is all you pay. Sign in, and get a hand stamp. It's good for all day. Bring in your tools, get the parts you need pulled, and use a wheelbarrow to lighten the load. Pay for your parts, prices you'll be fond of. Each part's price the same, Chevy or Honda. Get exchange warranty for 30 days too. Swap out the parts you don't need for the parts that you do. Happy picking! 
Madeline's Antiques and Uniques at 6107 Murfreesboro Road in Manchester has been helping collectors find just the right thing since 2008. With 40 quality dealers and a constantly changing inventory of collectibles from the 1800s to the present, they have many unique items in the store and new things coming in daily. Are you looking for the perfect lamp or clock to finish your collection? A vintage lunchbox from your childhood? Well, you can find that plus any number of other unique items in their huge building. With their easy access off I-24, they meet many travelers from around the world and just around the corner that come to buy and sell antiques or just to stop and have a free cup of coffee and a cookie while browsing around the store. Come visit owner Madeline Kemp and travel back in time at Madeline's Antiques and Uniques. So many memories. My name's John Hirschman. I'm one of the original six owners of PH Rentals. Started the company 30 years ago when we saw a need for individual construction, industrial, and commercial storage. We have trailers and containers for lease and sell. Our physical location is 2947 Old Manchester Highway, Tullahoma, Tennessee. Uh, my phone number is area code 931. 273-4252. The Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester has been voted as having the best hamburgers in Manchester. Hometown atmosphere, historical memorabilia, and of course those great burgers, salads, chicken, and so much more. It's the Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester. Call in orders at 728-4452. You can also order at the convenient outdoor curb service. Hamburgers are made the old-fashioned way. At the Jiffy Burger, Manchester's finest hamburgers. Open 7 30 until 9, Monday through Saturday. We would like to thank Dr. David Florence for supporting Let's Talk Antiques. See Dr. Florence at 804 Kalon Street in Manchester for all of your medical needs. Call 728-5522 for your appointment today. Most insurances accepted. Talking about the Dukes of Hazard, I remember they were really they were smarter than the law. Mm -hmm. oh, of course. <laughs> Think about that. They were smarter than yeah. Roscoe. Do you reckon that might have been on purpose? Mm. But well, think, it wouldn't have been as much fun to watch if they got arrested in the first episode. <laughs> every time. Then, yeah. You know, they did get the arrested. Reverse psychology they is what did I'm trying get, to get at. They did get arrested every once in a while, though, didn't But they always got out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of those early westerns, you know, like the Roy <laughs> yeah. Rogers and Gene Autry where the bad guy gets away. And yeah. The guy always wins. Yeah. Gene's always in jail and can't figure out how to get out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. A couple more Marilyn Monroe things. We've yeah. got a autographed check from Marilyn Monroe. Uh, well, signed, I guess. Uh, 37 bids for that. It went for $3,062. Um, now this next item you bid on, right? Yeah, actually, I, I wear this all the time. <laughs> it's a Marilyn Monroe. You know that don't sound good. Yeah, I know. That's what it just came out. Okay. Uh, personally worn nightgown, and it's it's from Australia. And Priceless. there was all this kind of stuff on it of authentic certificate authenticity. of authenticity and uh, estimated value and stuff like that. And it was insured for a thousand dollars, but it sold for three thousand thirty four dollars. So hmm. there you go. Uh, here is a uh, autograph of her and her husband, uh, Arthur Miller, is it? Mm -hmm. and uh, that was sold for $3,000. It's graded, it looks like. Yes, it is. It's PSAD. Yeah. PSAD, PSAD graded. And graded. Yeah, so a, a, a no, graded one. I remember one. that. No, I just couldn't understand how anything as good looking as Marilyn was reach up there and lip block with him. <laughs> <laughs> it happened oh. though, Ray. Oh. <laughs> Bad memory. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a, a 1953 original photo by John Florina of Maryland. She's sitting, looks like in a kitchen. Uh, $3,000, 65 mm. bids for that one. Uh, we have a Marilyn Monroe signed oversized color magazine page, 1954. Uh, it is not, is it signed? It is not signed. Oh, it is, it's signed, sorry. Three thousand dollars to four bids, and let's see if we can find something unusual. Mm, uh, that's about all the. All right, so let's go to the. Uh, there is no way that we're going to get 
We're only on the still on the first day of this month in history. Yeah, we're still on June first. So. Yeah. Well, we've got a few here that I don't think we're going to find a lot of stuff on eBay. All right. What's our next one? Mm. On June fourth, nineteen seventy-seven, poppy flowers by Vincent Van Gogh was stolen from the Mohammed Museum in Cairo, Egypt, for the first time. And it was found and returned in the next decade, but stolen again in 2010 from the same museum. Wow. The masterpiece is valued at 50 plus million dollars. Mm. Oh, so okay. That's it for the first they time. They should have got rid of that so security they, guard. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sound like that uh, that museum has made a lot of money off that insurance company since it's got stole twice. Yeah, and it was almost a dec the next decade before they got the yeah. money. So, so what did you, what did you find about good old Vincent? There are Vincent Van Gogh paintings on, on eBay. Mm -hmm. You think they're really... Uh, here's a <clears throat> original de Buvo something that's in a different language from Spain. Uh, Vincent Van Gogh, 1888. They were asking $29,000 and took a best offer on it. Um, I don't know if I'd be buying a Van Gogh off of eBay. Well, you know, if you've, they've got a good rating, you know. <laughs> yeah. Vincent Van Gogh thatched cottages at Corville, original lithograph on paper. They were asking 10500 and took a best offer. Um, and then here's a Vincent Van Gogh Swiss watch with his face on it. Uh, that went for $1,900 with 28 bids. That came from the Ukraine. Hmm. Um, here is a original oil painting, Still Life, by Vincent Van Gogh, it says. $1,650. That, that came in from Estonia. Hmm. Uh, antique post-impressionist original oil painting, signed Vincent Van Gogh with Certificate of Authenticity. Uh, $1,200 from, hmm. from Sweden. Yeah. Here's... Uh, Vincent Van Gogh Sunflowers Silver Set. It's a small uh, paintings of flowers. It looks like postage stamps mm -hmm. and things. Uh, that came. That was from Poland, and they they were wanting twelve hundred dollars and took a best offer. Mm -hmm. um, Give us one more Van Gogh, and then we're gonna get to the next day, or we're gonna. Well, we're not even gonna get to the tenth of the month. We're gonna we have go. a hard time getting very far here Here's today. A, Post-impressionist original oil painting on canvas, signed Vincent Van Gogh with a certificate of authenticity. It's a painting of a, of a, like a bedroom with somebody sitting on the couch. Uh, Eight hundred and fifty dollars with five bids. That don't, from Sweden. That sounds. I don't know. Hmm. Well, there they go. All right. <laughs> so, Ronnie, what's our next date? Okay, June the sixth, eighteen sixty-eight. Uh, Royal Naval Officer and Explorer Captain Robert Falcon Scott was born. <clears throat> in 1912, he and his team made it to the South Pole, but were more than a month behind um, Robert Amuldinson, the first to reach it. Unfortunately, he and his team all died from exposure, exhaustion, and lack of food on the return trip to their camp. Even so, Scott of the Antarctic became a national hero hmm. in Great Britain. Now, his Silk Union Jack, taken on his two um, Antarctic expeditions, <clears throat> including the last one, sold for $118,929. All right. We have hey, one. Christies. One thing on eBay that's that's really relevant, and it was a Sir Robert Falcon Scott, Scott of the Antarctic, two-page letter. Uh, it was sold in the United Kingdom, and it went, well, they were asking uh, almost $1,600 and took a best offer, so. Okay. So, Ronnie, we're going to let your voice rest just for a minute. It needs it. And, Philip, right. why don't you give us the next date? Mm. All right. I wasn't paying attention where we're at. Uh, June 6th, uh, D-Day, the Normandy invasion by the greatest generation. Uh, a 48-star flag flown from the U.S. Navy landing craft, uh, 60, sold for $514,000 at Heritage Auctions on June 12th, 2016. It was a personal collection of Lieutenant Howard Vanderbeek. 
the skipper of the ship. That's amazing. It was the first vessel to deliver troops to Utah Beach, and it ferried soldiers in 18 more assault waves. Hey, mm. you think about the World War II stuff is really hot right now. Mm. I mean, people are really hunting it. Ray, why don't you read June 7th right there? Ronnie, point it to him. Well, before we forget that, now, on June the 6th, there was something really important that we hadn't even mentioned. What was that? I was born. Oh, oh really? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, we blew right past that at the, the beginning of the month. Why, right? good thing. Why are you not in Antique Weekly? <laughs> you know, I hadn't figured that out either. Ronnie, you let me down on this. You're supposed you? to call them people. All right, Ronnie. 1967 or what? Point that mic toward Ray and let him read number seven. Which one is it? June 7th, on the bottom right there, Ray. Post-impressionist painter Paul... Gauguin, Gauguin or something was born in Paris. Mm -hmm. And I'll get up here. His 1892, When Will You Marry? depicted two Tahitian women sold in private, private sale in 2015 for about $300 million. Wow. Two women? Wow. It depicted. It is believed that that's what they brought anyway. He said that he counted. Y'all would give me a hard one. I can't read these words. So he counted what? You're saying, uh, <laughs> that word was the. Basario and Van Gogh and friends. Boy, I have killed that commercial. So, okay, so the bottom line is it brought $300 million. Is that what you're telling me? For two women. Okay. All right, Philip, what's our next one? We're going to anger some women about that now. Uh, Francis, June 8th, Francis Crick was born near Northampton, England. He is the discoverer of the structure of DNA with James Watson and Maurice Wilkins. Hmm. All shared a Nobel Prize in 1962. <laughs> Crick's Nobel, Nobel Prize sold in April 2013 for $2,270,500 at Heritage Auctions. Hmm. A year later, Watson's Nobel uh, hit Four point seven five million at Christie's. His five-page Nobel banquet speech sold for three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars during the same auction. Mm. That tell you what, a lot we only got about a minute left. But World War Two, what's the highest piece that brought on World War Two that well, sold? I, uh, it was a D-Day search that I ran. Yeah, and mm -hmm. we have an Omaha Beach helmet with liner and name on it. Uh, U.S. Navy number no. seven battalion. Uh, 48 bids, $7,700. All right, I tell you what, we're going to give a few more prices after you push the button and after we take a break. Okay. This is Let's Talk Antiques on Thunder Radio. Hello, I'm Pick and Rick T from CFC, best place to get you used auto parts and all types of metals to repurpose for your needs. Just take a drive down 55, see this handsome guy, stop on by. Check out our computer for hundreds of autos to locate the make and the model of the part you need. Two dollar fee is all you pay. Sign in and get a hand stamp, it's good for all day. Bring in your tools, get the parts you need pulled, and use a wheelbarrow to lighten the load. Pay for your parts, prices you'll be fond of. Each part's price the same, Chevy or Honda. Get exchange warranty for 30 days too. Swap out the parts you don't need for the parts that you do. Happy picking! Madeline's Antiques and Uniques at 6107 Murfreesboro Road in Manchester has been helping collectors find just the right thing since 2008. With 40 quality dealers and a constantly changing inventory of collectibles from the 1800s to the present, they have many unique items in the store and new things coming in daily. Are you looking for the perfect lamp or clock to finish your collection? A vintage lunchbox from your childhood? Well, you can find that plus any number of other unique items in their huge building. With their easy access off I-24, they meet many travelers from around the world and just around the corner that come to buy and sell antiques or just to stop and have a free cup of coffee and a cookie while browsing around the store. Come visit owner Madeline Kemp and travel back in time at Madeline's Antiques and Uniques. So many memories. My name's John Hirschman. I'm one of the original six owners of PH Rentals. Started the company 30 years ago when we saw a need for individual construction, industrial, and commercial storage. We have trailers and containers for lease and sell. Our physical location is 2947. Old Manchester Highway, Tullahoma, Tennessee. Uh, my phone number is area code 
973-4252. The Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester has been voted as having the best hamburgers in Manchester. Hometown atmosphere, historical memorabilia, and of course those great burgers, salads, chicken, and so much more. It's the Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester. Call in orders at 728-4452. You can also order at the convenient outdoor curb service. Hamburgers are made the old-fashioned way at the Jiffy Burger, Manchester's finest hamburgers. Open 7.30 until 9, Monday through Saturday. We would like to thank Dr. David Florence for supporting Let's Talk Antiques. See Dr. Florence at 804 Kalon Street in Manchester for all of your medical needs. Call 728-5522 for your appointment today. Most insurances accepted. All right, folks, we're back. This here is June 11th, 1770. Captain James Cook discovered the Great Barrier Reef when his ship Endeavor ran around on it, ran aground on it. I'll get that right. Cook voyaged far away from his home in England to New Zealand, Australia, and Hawaii, where he perished. In 2003, a gold-mounted hardwood walking cane made made from the spear that killed Captain Cook on February 14, 1779, kept by an officer of the Endeavour, was sold for $150,750 at Lyon and Turnbull. It was engraved with from Admiral C.B.H. Ross C.B. to Admiral Sir David Malin, G.C.B., made on made of the spear which killed Captain Cook, R.N. also. Cook's pistol sold for $227,100 at Lesky Auctions in Australia in 2013. Hmm. Okay, so now, do you still have us a few D-Day? I do. Okay. Uh, there was a Normandy Invasion D-Day landing journal that went for uh, $6,000 was to buy it now. And I had to pull this up to look at it. It's got um, 29 photos, uh, mimeographed copies of of the orders to go. Uh, it's it's a it's a 55 pages of of with 109 photographs of convoy operations. I mean, it's, it's a really great collection. For uh, for six thousand dollars. Well, if somebody pretty, that collects World War II stuff, that'd be great. They would really like that. Give yeah. us one more piece. We'll... How about a uh, World War II U.S. Uh, Air Force Army Air Force uh, flight jacket from the 82nd Airborne D-Day invasion? Uh, Four thousand two hundred eighty-seven dollars after twenty bids. Mm. Man. Okay, so we're not go obviously we're not going to finish this. So let's skip around to. Let's go to June 22nd, and then let's make sure that we get Billy the Kid involved. Okay. June 22nd is kind of an important one because uh, I think, um, isn't she the mother of uh, the... No, no, no. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, on June 22nd, 1969, the star Judy Garland uh, mm -hmm. passed away, who played Dorothy in yep. The Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. uh, Dorothy's blue gingham dress worn in The Wizard of Oz has sold twice. Uh, Julian's auction sold it for $480,000 in 2012. And then Bonham's tripled its price to $1,565,000 just three years later in 2015. Uh, Over the Rainbow, which uh, Garland sang in the dress, was often cut from the movie to shorten its running time. <laughs> it won an Academy Award for Best Original Song and became Garland's lifelong theme song. You know, Judy Garland and Mickey Rooney done several shows together yeah. in the 30s. All right, so what have you found on Judy Garland? Julie, Judy Garland, uh, Wizard of Oz, Dorothy's Dress Costume Card. $8,500. not sure exactly what that is. You said it was a costume card. What's a costume card? I don't know. <laughs> Is it a card that was left in a costume that described it? Uh, let me, let's, let's look this up and try right, and figure out why the, this is the highest rating thing and we're not sure what it is. Authentic limited edition movie worn costume material card. Oh, it's got the material on the it. The card features an actual piece of the blue and white gingham dress worn by Judy Garland. 
so two and a half inch by three and a half inch. Uh, so they've apparently cut up the strips, mm -hmm. <laughs> or well, one of them. Well, you know, they used to do that with bats in yeah. baseball. They would just sell a little piece of it, like on a baseball card. Yeah, well, you bring can more money. Own the little piece of her dress for uh, eight thousand five hundred dollars. Now, if it came with an autograph, you know, then yeah, nice. That'd be hard enough. To... Right, you could do there that you. easy, though. Yeah, there you go. So, see, I'm learning. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, and uh, our next story was in June twenty fifth, two thousand eleven. A tin type photo of Billy the Kid sold for two point three million dollars. Yeah, remember we talked about that. At uh, at Brian Libel's Old West auction, the photo uh, gave rise to the myth that it was a left-handed gun because of a tin type. The image was flipped. Oh, boys! <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that was one ugly dude. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you know he he was born like New York or some some northern state, wasn't he? Did he? I don't know. I was thinking he was. No, here's uh eBay's got going on with him a circa yeah. 1875 original Jesse Evans outlaw tin type photograph, possibly Billy the Kid, went for uh, or they were asking five thousand dollars and took a best offer. Hmm. Here's a uh, Billy the Kid books signed autographed West America Pat Garrett book. Hmm. Now, that would not be Billy's autograph though. Well, here so. here's a good one. This one right here, June sixteenth. We're skipping around the Apache folks, leader. Because we'll never get done. Yeah, June sixteenth, eighteen twenty nine. The Apache leader Geronimo was born. His model eighteen seventy Springfield rifle sold for ninety nine thousand four hundred fifty dollars at Bottom and Butterfields in two thousand seven. Well, you got on Geronimo. I know his signature brings some money. I was gonna say. And he prints it, you know, he he could barely write, but he wrote good enough that he used to sell his autograph to tourists. Here is a, uh, a there was a, a photograph of Geronimo, um, part of a Swan live auction event, six bids, it went for $18,000. Here is a 1888 Allen and Ginter, uh, American Indian Chiefs. Uh, Geronimo, uh, a little card. Mm -hmm. PSA graded eight. Uh, they were asking twenty two hundred dollars and took a best offer. Uh, There's see. your signature. Uh, Is that his signature right there? Uh, I don't think it is. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Apache Chief Geronimo's signature, and his funeral ribbon. Uh, twenty two bids on it for nine hundred ten dollars. Hmm. No, Geronimo means the one who yawns. He does? Really? That's what it means. The one who yawns. Your voice is coming back, Ronnie. I didn't have not used it for a few minutes. <laughs> I don't see any more autographs mm -hmm. on here, are they? No, but he used to sign a lot of them. Huh. Okay. All right. Let's jump to another. Here you go. Uh, June 25th, 2011. One of Michael Jackson's two uh, black and red leather jackets that were worn in the Thriller video. Mm-hmm. Sold for $1.8 million at Julian's auction. So that was, he, I, I heard a thing the other day saying that it was, we were coming up on his eighth anniversary of his death. So that was, that was post Michael Jackson death. I don't think you could have gotten all, nearly $2 million for, for it before he died. See, you know, Michael Jackson, didn't he invest a lot? Like, didn't he buy the Beatles? Yes. All the rights to the Beatles he, he songs? He bought their publishing. The yeah. 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 And several other. He he made some good investments. Let me see. Here's one more thing. Is uh, June 28, 2012. Uh, delightful memorabilia from the movie Willy Wonka, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the 1979 version, sold at Profiles in History. Veruca Salt's Everlasting Gobstopper, one of the only two known to exist, went for forty thousand dollars. And Willy Wonka's outfit, including the purple velvet coat, slacks, white shirt, purple and violet lame vest, and floral satin tie that Willy Wonka's um, went for sixty thousand mm. dollars. All right, with that, we got to get out of here. You you didn't talk to us out of a show. I'd like to have that outfit. You can we'll get see it. you next week at ten o'clock. We're live from ten to eleven. Let's talk antiques on Thunder Radio.